Good morning, First Baptist Church of Galesburg. Let's take our seats and start worshiping the Lord. I'd like to begin this morning with a very short psalm, uh, number 117. I think it goes along with the message you have for us today, Pastor. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. The first hymn we're going to sing has praised the Lord all through it. And it was written by Fanny Crosby and put into a tiny little hymnal in a tiny little church in 1875. From that tiny little hymnal, the fire, the fever in that hymn spread to the fact that it's still a favorite hymn in many, many churches. So won't you stand and let's sing together. Amen? Praise the Lord. Be seated, please. Did you know that one? Yeah, oh, good. <laughs> well, good morning. Welcome to First Baptist. If you're joining us here for the first time, my name is Eric. I'm the pastor of discipleship here. It's so good to see you all. Uh, today. Uh, in the pew in front of you, there is a uh, connection card. We ask uh, you don't have to fill the whole thing out unless there's something you'd like to update us on. But we do say uh, we'd love having a record of your attendance, knowing that you joined us in worship today, so if you could at least write your name on there. And then on the back side, there is a spot for prayer requests and praises as the staff prays for you throughout the week. So if you have something you'd like to share, feel free to add it there. 
And if you are joining us online, there is a space for an online connection card. You can find that uh, in the description to our YouTube video or on the Facebook page. Uh, we've been continuing our uh, giving for Ukraine through one great hour of sharing. Um, if you are feeling called to wanting to help to support the refugees, uh, you can continue to do so throughout the month of May. Uh, just make sure as you uh, put your money in the envelope and place it in one of the offering plates as you're leaving the sanctuary that you just designate it there for Ukraine. Uh, we've also with our, I've already gotten some great responses for this, so thank you guys so much. Um, camp is coming up this summer for our junior and senior high uh, students, and uh, we are looking to find ways to raise money so that we can go. So some of you have offered uh, some work and some things to that can be done around your place or sponsor some people here at the church. Uh, doing some work around here, so uh, we appreciate that uh, so that they can earn a little uh, money towards that so that they are not fully responsible for the cost of that. A uh, big idea behind this, too, it's not just, I mean, a big part of it is to get the money, of course, but the other part of it is uh, for connections. You know, we've got some students who come on Sunday nights who have never darkened the doorstep here on Sunday morning, but this is a chance to get uh, to be able for you to meet them, talk with them, get to know a little about them, and have a face to a name as you're praying for, for them. Um, so we encourage just that, too, that you have the opportunity to meet and encounter these students as well. So if you are interested in being a part of that, just feel free to reach out to me. Uh, this last thing, didn't have a slide for it, the uh, Sunday night prayer is continuing, or I might have been off for a few weeks, the holidays and travel and things like that, but we are having our evening prayer service, in, oh, I'm clicking too many buttons there, my bad, but it does meet over in uh, the loft, or, or just right over here in this room, uh, so if you are, are feeling called to that, you can come and join us tonight at 6. And as always, please check in your bulletins for other ways you're connected in the life of First Baptist. Thank you. Can we stand and sing again, please? my soul and sing of him who died for thee and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity crown him the lord of life who triumphed o'er the grave who rose victorious in the strife for those he to save his glories now we sing who died and rose on high who died eternal life to bring and lives that death may die crown him the lord of heaven one with the father known one with the spirit through from yonder glorious throne to thee be endless praise for thou for us hast died be thou o lord through endless days adored and Please be seated.
Scripture reading this morning is from uh, Matthew chapter 3, 1 through 11. In those days, John the Baptist came to the Judean wilderness and began preaching. His message was, repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, he is a voice shouting out in the wilderness, prepare, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. John's clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem and from all over Judea, all over the Jordan Valley, went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptize, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed, who warned you to flee... Who warned you to flee God's coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing, for I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from even these very stones. Even the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. I baptize with water, whose repent of sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I am not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you and with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He is ready to separate the chaff from the wheat and the winnowing fork. Then he will clean up the threshings area, gathering the wheat into his barn, but burning the shaft with never-ending fire. This is the word of the Lord. gone last week and I had surgery and uh, it's kind of obvious where I had the surgery if you get close to me you can see it it is kind of funny though I was traveling with friends yesterday and uh, I was very self-conscious about the surgery in my head and I needed to stop at the Dollar General to get something my friend was driving and uh, I, I didn't really want to stop she goes oh no one's no one's going to notice anything just go ahead and get in there and get it so I jumped out I go into the Dollar General I grab a couple of items, go up to the front counter, and this young guy looks at me and he goes, dude, what happened to your head? <laughs> and I was so mad at my friend, I go, oh, they noticed, let me tell you. So I had some uh, cells taken off of my head with the plastic surgery, and uh, then they're going to take out the stitches tomorrow, so I should be fine, but it's just a little bit weird looking right now. So we want to have a very special time right now, and uh, I'm going to invite up some special guests to join me here. Um, I think Haley is over here if I saw her, and I'm going to ask if, if it's okay if your parents come up too, if, if Brad and Lynn come up. I'd like the family to join us here for a few moments. And I'm going to tell you in a second why they're coming up. Many of you probably know already. Haley, you look so different than the last time I saw you. <laughs> she was in this really cool uniform and all that, you know, stuff. But it's, today uh, is a very special day. I have to tell you, the other day, a couple weeks ago, Sherry said, hey, come with me down to City Hall. And uh, I'm like, well, what's going on? And she says, just, just come with me. And I was so glad I did because it was one special moment, wasn't it? So the city hall was packed. I think one of the aldermen said, I've never seen so many people in city hall before. It was packed. There were news crews there, people taking pictures. Uh, I don't know. It was just very exciting. And what it was about, I think most of you may know this, but Haley, who has grown up in First Baptist Church, she became the first female firefighter in Galesburg, right? 
Isn't that awesome? Let's just <laughs> and I'll tell you what, it is not easy becoming a firefighter. I mean, they just, you just don't sign up on the dotted line. They go, oh, yeah, you got a job. It, there's a lot to it, isn't there? There really is. Yeah. Mentally and physically, you have to go through a lot. And I know this last week, your mom was telling me you had to go through all this heat, right? It wasn't easy, probably, was it? So at any rate, um, we were there celebrating. They had speeches. They, they, they gave her, um, her probably, what was it, like a medallion or something? At any rate, they, they ushered her into the grouping of firefighters for Galesburg. It was just very inspiring. And the way home, I thought, you know what? We could have her come up to church and pray for her and just ask God to bless her. So we arranged that today, and we're really excited to have Healy here with us. So you're going through some schooling, right? Yeah. Okay. Is it called the Academy? Okay, so you've got to do that this summer, and classes, and probably more physical stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and Haley is not a big person, but she must have a big heart, because she is doing all of this and passing the test, but you know, she's still got a little bit more to go, and I thought it would be awesome if her church could just bless her this morning with a time of prayer. Um, her, her dad, Brad, was a longtime firefighter, weren't you? And just retired, what, in the last couple of years, maybe? Okay, so Brad uh, was her, maybe her mentor and inspirational factor. And uh, here they are. And it's just so good having these folks as longtime members of our church. And today, right now, we want to have a special prayer time for Haley and for her adventure as the first female firefighter in the history of Galesburg, Illinois. But yeah. <laughs> so cool. Let's pray for that right now, shall we? Let's all bow for prayer. Father God, I just want to pray, first of all, for Haley. And ask, Lord, that you would give her the strength to succeed in the upcoming weeks and months. Lord, these are not easy days. We've gone from cool weather to extremely hot. And she's got to be outdoors, probably doing a lot of physical things. And I'm sure it's exhausting. I know she goes home probably some nights and has homework galore and has classes she has to pass. So, Father, just give her the intellectual strength she needs the physical endurance, Lord, that she desires, and help her, Lord, to get over this last leg of the journey of becoming this female firefighter, the very first one in the history of this great city. Bless her, Lord, with passion, with enthusiasm, with strength and insight. Help her, Lord, always to know that she is making a difference as a firefighter. I've seen them in action many times, Lord, saving buildings, saving people. Father, help her to be a great, great firefighter for years and decades to come. I pray your blessing on her parents, upon Lynn and Brad as they support her, bless this family entirely together as they uh, move forward to be a part of the scene of, of people who help us in our city, uh, specifically firefighting in this city and this county. Bless Haley today, Lord, and be with her in all of her adventures and all of her goals and objectives, I pray in the empowering, strengthening, and helping name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Haley, congratulations. Thank you very, much. very exciting. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. All right, guys, God bless you. All right, isn't that cool, guys? One of our very own here at First Baptist Church. Well, I have to tell you, I was, I was in the hotel last night and inspired by knowing that we're going to do this prayer time just before the sermon. I changed the whole opening of my sermon, and you'll see how this might have, have worked and fit. I was remembering that there was a story, and I found it on the Internet, and I pulled it up. It's a story about a church in a small town way out there in rural America. Well, one night, the church building caught fire and burned down. While the building was burning, many of the town folk were standing around and, and watching it burn. Well, the pastor had been called, so he shows up, drives up, and notices that there are many people there watching the church burn down who, who used to attend but didn't come to church anymore. He noticed finally as he walked up to one man who used to attend, and he said to him, he commented that he hadn't seen this man at church for some time, and he wondered where he had been. Sarcastically, the man responded to the pastor and said, It's because I haven't seen this church on fire in a long, long time. 
You know what? We need to see churches on fire these days. Not a physical fire, but a spiritual fire, don't we? As a matter of fact, this is what draws people to church in the first place and often keeps them there is that there is an excitement in the air. There is a passion. Let me share with you one of our Bible verses today on the clicker here. We'll hopefully pull it up. And there it is. Jeremiah was a prophet in the Old Testament, and uh, he was giving messages to the, uh, the people there in Israel, and they, they always didn't like it, so this is what he says about this. But if I say I'll never mention the Lord or speak in his name, his word burns in my heart like a fire. It's like a fire in my bones. I am worn out trying to hold it in. I cannot do it. Jeremiah says, you may try to shut me up. You may try to end that message of hope but it's like a fire that burns inside of me and it will burn through me and it's going to come out and God's going to be speaking. I want to talk to you that, about that this morning, about being that type of a person, about being that type of a church on fire for Jesus Christ. Let's bow for a prayer and ask God to help us. Father God, I just thank you for this message. I hope that it is one that just lights a fire under us today and helps us to move forward with more enthusiasm and excitement in our faith for Jesus Christ, I pray in your holy and redeeming name, Lord Jesus. Amen. You know, it's really interesting, folks. We live uh, in a day and age where people want to feel the adrenaline rush of excitement and enthusiasm in whatever they may be doing. In In the 21st century, I've noticed that we're just not content anymore to be passive bystanders. We want to be in the arena. We want to be part of the action. For example, It used to be that you could go and just go to an NBA game and just watch it, just just watch it. Not anymore. Now you have to go and catch the fever, basketball fever. That was their famous promo campaign a few years ago. My daughter's alma mater, the University of North Carolina, began using the promotional slogan several years ago that said, Catch the fever, Carolina fever. And right over the border here in Indiana is this pro basketball team for ladies called, you guessed it, the Indiana Fever. Today, it's not enough to just be involved in your favorite sports team. You have to catch the fever. This endorphin rush that people yearn for spills over into other modern areas of our world. And a word that captures this, I think, in our modern times is the word passion. You may remember, many of you who are a little bit older like me, several years ago there was a lady who was a famous actress named Elizabeth Taylor, and she made a ton of money with a pungent perfume. Its name? Passion. Someone once said, there are many things in life that will catch your eye, but only a few that will catch your heart. Pursue those. Are you passionate about what you do? I bet you are. You know, I grew up in California, but when I moved to the Midwest as a young man, I noticed that there are things that we are just get really excited about here in the Midwest. And the churches I've served, from Paris to Quincy, Jacksonville, whatever, uh, and rural churches especially, man, when that turkey and deer hunting season comes in, People are passionate about that. I know churches who have structured their worship around those hunting seasons and have the guys come in and pray beforehand before they go out. They just, you know, they're going to do it, so they just accommodate that. What about the Cardinals or Cubs? You know, if someone's going to give you some free tickets, go up to Wrigley or Bush Stadium, man, we get all excited about that. Yesterday was Jacksonville Day, where I'm from, in Bush Stadium. They won the game. People were excited about going. I've had guys in my churches who would not miss a NASCAR race if you gave them a million dollars. They are on an adrenaline rush about NASCAR. And a couple of weeks ago, if someone had said to you, hey, you know what, I found a field with hundreds of Morel mushrooms, you'd grab your bag and get out there because you are passionate about finding those Morel mushrooms. Isn't it interesting, my good friends? (laughs) We are passionate about all sorts of daily activities, Many of these activities are sort of mundane, actually. Yet when it comes to the greatest, the most awesome gift we have ever received, the gospel and the church of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we are often unexcited, passionless, and lacking any heartfelt enthusiasm. 
The famous evangelist Leonard Ravenhill once put it like this in one of his gospel tracts. He said, the church began in the, in the spirit. Now she's operating in the flesh. There's no pillar of fire over the sanctuary. There are no preachers who can hold the hellbound spellbound. I'm not sure that it can be proved that Nero was fiddling while Rome burned, but it can be proved that the church is fiddling while the world is burning. Folks, allow me to speak from the depths of my heart right here up here at the pulpit this morning. I love the church. That's why I drive 100 miles almost every weekend one way to come from Jacksonville to be with you because I want to see our churches succeed. I, I love the church. And I think our churches have the potential to, uh, to be great beyond what they can even begin to fathom. But the possibilities for growth and community impact are often drained away in a river of passive spirituality. The Bible says you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were. The church can be a pretty innocuous group of folks sometimes, way too passive, way too passionless. And quite frankly, this is one of the major reasons, I think, that congregations plateau grow stale, and get shoved to the margins of their communities. They have no heart, no passion, no fire, and no fever. That's why God in the Bible implores us to live our lives and build our churches with enthusiasm and vigor. In the end, it's the only way that the saints will be satisfied and, and sinners will be saved. And I'm telling you, a church like that becomes a magnet. It becomes magnetic. People want to come to that church. They want to come to that congregation and see what they're up to. Today, we use these modern words like passion, enthusiasm, excitement. In the Bible, they use words like fire, zeal, and heart. For example, I want you to check out these key Bible stories and verses. Each of these episodes I'm going to share with you right now motivates us towards a more passionate daily faith. Here comes one from the book of Deuteronomy. Famous verse says this, And you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your strength. Not some of it, not when you feel like it, but you're to love God with all of your heart. Do you love God that way? With all of your heart? I was reading a book a while back called The Sacred Romance by Curtis and Elledge, and they wrote this in their book. They said, The life of the heart is a place of great mystery, yet we have many expressions to help us to express the flame of the human soul. We describe a person without compassion as heartless, and we urge him or her to have a heart. Our deepest hurts we call heartaches. Jilted lovers are heartbroken. Courageous soldiers are brave-hearted. The truly evil are black-hearted, and saints have hearts of gold. If we need to speak to the, in the most intimate level, we, we want you to have a heart-to-heart -heart with us. Light-hearted is how we feel on vacation. And when we love someone as truly as we may, we love them with all of our hearts. But when we lose our passion for life, when a, when a deadness sets in that we cannot seem to shake, we confess my heart's just not in it. And the book finishes by saying, in the end, it doesn't matter how well we've performed or what we've accomplished, a life without heart is not worth living. Boy, that last sentence is haunting to me. A life without heart is not worth living. Remember that God doesn't just expect us to love him with our minds and our lifestyles. Those are important. He also wants us to love him with all of our heart. That's what Jeremiah was talking about in that opening passage that I read to you. You know, I've noticed that often our spiritual fire and passion just need to be reignited. Let me show you a little verse here about a pastor who needed this in the Bible his name was Timothy, and St. Paul wrote to him these words. This is why I remind you, Timothy, to fan into flames the spiritual gift that God gave you when I laid my hands upon you. I don't know what happened to this young pastor, Timothy, but he had lost it somehow. 
He'd lost the fire. Something had happened. Maybe there was a lack of commitment from his people, and he was just getting discouraged. Boy, pastors can get discouraged, I'm telling you. Maybe there were satanic attacks. He's coming after you every day. He's like a lion, the Bible says. Maybe there was just no response from the community. He tried every idea he could. He was preaching, teaching, loving people. Nothing was happening. Are we any different today? Spiritual energy drains away. We just don't feel it anymore. Our hearts aren't in it. Why? Well, maybe it's physiological. It could be. Maybe we have too much of a need for approval from other people. Maybe we've picked out the wrong friends or taken us down the wrong alleys. Maybe we're just simply uh, in an ocean of negative, apathetic thinking every day. You ever get in that mode where you're just cynical about life and things around you? Many years ago, I went to uh, Marble Collegiate Church in New York City where Norman Vincent Peale was the pastor. He wrote a lot of famous books, great pastor. And one of his books, he told this story. It's really interesting. He said he was in a brass foundry, and he watched molten metal at 2,200 degrees being poured out of a huge crucible made of some translucent material that, when hot, glowed like fire, he said. The foundry superintendent took a huge sledgehammer, held it in both hands, and delivered powerful blows against a hot, empty crucible. He could hardly make a dent against it. Then he picked up a small little hammer and approached a crucible that had completely cooled off and was cold. With a short motion of the wrist, he tapped the cold crucible and it completely shattered. Nothing can break these crucibles when they're hot, he said, but anything can break them when they are cold. And then he added this really interesting insight. He said, it's pretty hard to break a man whose spirit is hot, but even small things will bust him wide open when his spirit goes cold. Boy, isn't that true? Isn't that why the scriptures implore us to passionate, on fire Christian living? Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verse 11, be on fire with the Spirit. Are you on fire with the Spirit? Or has the Holy Spirit just kind of left you and you're not sure you know, where, where you're going every day? It says of King David, King David said, zeal for your house consumes me. When you get up on Sunday morning, do you have a zeal for coming to church, for worshiping for God's house? Another verse in 1 Thessalonians says, do not extinguish the Spirit's fire. Let me go over some groups of people that need this fire in their lives. First of all, your pastor needs this. You know, you come into a church and you can just sense if the pastor doesn't have much zeal. Maybe he's out of gas, I don't know, something happened. But pastors need to have a passionate excitement. When they get up in the pulpit to preach, when they lead, whatever they do, they need to have a zeal. Lyle Schaller in one of his books once said this, I think passion is the critical variable. It has taken me a long time to come around to that. But if a pastor, he said, does not have passion for the mission, you can forget the rest. And I found that to be true. What about leaders, leaders in the church, leaders in the Christian community? They need to be enthusiastic, don't they? A leader who is not passionately committed to the cause will not draw much commitment from others. When I was a young pastor in my first church in Paris, Illinois in the late 70s, a man came to town to do a revival, and his name was David Wilkerson. Some of you may remember this name. David Wilkerson was a young man in the 50s and 60s, and God called him to go to New York City, and he helped convert scores of these, of these gangs to faith in Jesus Christ. They made a movie and a book about that called The Cross and the Switchblade. Well, several years later in the 70s, David was doing revivals all over America, and he came to Paris. And I'll never forget that, that, uh, that, that morning, we had a prayer brick breakfast with other pastors that kicked off the event, and I sat there, and David Wilkerson came into the room. Have you ever been in a room where a person came in and you could feel this energy come off of him that you couldn't get from anybody else? I'm telling you, David Wilkerson had a Holy Spirit power and energy, a sort of mojo, an R around him that was palpable. You could feel it when he came into the room. And that night in that city of, of 10,000 people, 2,000 people attended. So one-fifth of the entire population came to the revival, and over 200 people gave their lives to Jesus Christ. Power in Christian leaders. But you know, the people... And our churches need to be passionate also. 
I have these neighbors that live across the street from me, and they're Sicilian Italians. And, and they really cracked me up. The first year I was there, I thought I was going to lose my mind because you'd hear them fighting and screaming and yelling, and the neighbors would even call the cops. And you look out, and a minute later, they're all dancing and having a party. And then an hour later, they're fighting again. I discovered this is just kind of the Italian way they do, they do things. They fight, they love, and back and forth they go. Well, they go to this, uh, this big uh, Pentecostal church in town. And the father, his name is Pasquale, Pasquale Sciala. And he, he never says anything good about his church. <laughs> he, he doesn't like the pastor, doesn't like the minister, doesn't like all this stuff. He's negative, negative, negative. I asked him one day, I said, well, Pasquale, why in the world do you go to that church? This is what he said. Because my church is exciting. Worship is exciting. The preaching is exciting. The people are having a great time, and I want to be a part of it. You see what happens here is, when a church is filled with zeal and some fire and excitement, it becomes magnetic, and it draws in even the negative thinkers like my neighbor Pasquale. The pollster George Gallup did a survey of 13,000 people in 130 countries a few years ago. It's the only time he's ever done a survey that was more or less worldwide. Interestingly enough, it was a survey of people who used to go, used to, go to church, but they don't go to church anymore. There were a number of questions in the survey, and one of the questions asked, what would need to happen for you to return to church? The number one answer was this, passion in the lives of the members and the leaders. Isn't that interesting? What people wanted to see was a fire, a zeal, an enthusiasm among Christians that made going to church meaningful. Now let me give a little, word, a little bit of a word of caution here, because some of you may be thinking this. I don't want you to let the bad examples of overzealous fanatics scare you off this morning from what I'm saying. There are people who are on fire. They're in cults. And man, they just, they're excited about what they're doing, but their message is, is just crazy. The Islamic fundamentalists are on fire but they blow up buildings in New York City. That's not what I'm talking about. These people are driven by bad theology and fanaticism. What I'm talking about this morning is joyful enthusiasm that will light up our church and get, get our people fired up for positive action. Several years ago, there was this guy in Korea named Sai, and he made this music video <laughs> called Gingham Style. And I saw it, and a lot of people were watching it, and I go, this is kind of crazy. And a month or two later, they said that it had a billion plays. It was like, at that time, the most played music video in history. And as I watched it, it struck me why people like this crazy thing. You know why? It just had fun, high-energy excitement. That's all it was, four minutes of high-energy fun. People needed that. I watch the Food Network. You can tell I watch the Food Network. I'm a full gospel preacher right here, ladies and gentlemen. And my son is a chef, so we exchange recipes. Have you ever watched the Food Network? They get so excited about cooking, you know, uh, liver and onions or a fried egg or something. They're like, oh, we're going to put this sauce on, and they're excited about this. That cultic couple that comes to your front door and wants to convert you to their bizarre faith, they're excited. They always are. My friends, let me tell you this. All these groups have, that I just mentioned to you, are some funky dance moves, fancy appetizers, and word theology. We have the way, the truth, and the life. Our Lord and his church. Doesn't that light a fire in your heart this morning? I hope so. Let me give you two words of counsel here before I close my message this morning. Number one is this. If your fire for the church or for the Lord is flickering, then make sure you have a strong attachment to a fireplace. And that's the church. The church is the place you can huddle together with others, get enthusiasm, get encouragement, get inspiration to go out and take on the day, go out and take on the week. I was at a campfire at church camp a few years ago. Had a big roaring fire. All the embers are together, they're burning hot, and two of them popped out. And I noticed after just a moment they grew cold and icy. When they were all together, they were hot. When they popped out on their own, they grew cold. And the same happens to us if we don't have a great fireplace that we're a part of, like the church. Another thing that you'll need is a fire starter. In the book of Romans, Paul said, Be on fire with the Spirit. 
To be set on fire, we must let God rekindle that blaze within us. You can't fire it up yourself. You need to depend on him because in the Christian life, there's no spontaneous combustion. The Holy Spirit needs to get a hold of you. When I was a little kid, I got sick one day, and I got a real high fever. My mama came in. She put her hand on my head, and she said, Jimmy, you're burning up. (laughs) And that's what we need in the spiritual realm today, ladies and gentlemen. We need to catch the fever, his fever, an elevated spiritual temperature, a spirit so hot that we're on fire, the same fire that burned in Jeremiah's bones that burned in the hearts of the two disciples in the road to Emmaus, the same fire that burned in John Wesley's heart that compelled him to ride 250,000 miles on horseback, preach thousands of sermons, write 400 books, start churches, schools, hospitals, and orphanages, the same fever fueled by fire at Pentecost and and flamed by the Holy Spirit, the same fever that causes us to take risks explore virgin territory, and reevaluate and reorder our priorities in life. Jesus said, if you follow me, you'll have to catch the fever, the same fever that spreads revival, preaches repentance, and kills the bacteria of sin, apathy, tedium, and egotism. Jesus calls us to be, as Leonard Sweet puts it, dangerously Christian, to catch the fire of Pentecost, Catch the spirit, church. Catch the fever. In the Old Testament, King Jehu said, Come with me, and I will show you my zeal for the Lord. Shouldn't that be our life verse? Come with me, and I'll show you my zeal for Jesus Christ. Does anyone here this morning want more passion in your walk with Christ and more fulfillment in your family and your marriage relationships? You can have it. It's there for the taking. As we move a few minutes, uh, in a few minutes into our time of commitment and invitation, it's time to check your spiritual pulse. Maybe you need greater enthusiasm in your prayer life, in your Bible study life. Would you consider a little bit later on, as we sing this closing hymn, coming up to the altar, letting me pray for you for that area of your life. Maybe you need more excitement in leading and, and in teaching. Maybe you're a leader in this church, but your, 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 your gas tank is running low. You've lost a fire in your heart that used to burn for God in his church. You, you're suffering some ministry fatigue, burned out, tired, discouraged. You need new passion in your faith. Maybe this morning you've come and you're in a family grouping or in a marriage and the fire is it's just running cold. Maybe the passion isn't there like it used to be. Are you ready to be happy again? Today can be your moment for renewed joy in those damaged relationships. God wants First Baptist Church to be filled with passion, excitement, and a renewed fever for him and for each other. Please don't miss this holy opportunity this morning. We're going to come up and do some prayer moments, then we're going to sing the closing hymn. And if you need prayer for more fire and zeal in your heart this morning, you come forward and I'll pray for you specifically. Then you can be seated once again. Okay, uh, is Eric here still in the sanctuary? He's not. So it looks like I'm going to have to cover the prayer moments. That's okay. Dorothy normally does that, but I am prepared to do it right now. Here we go. All right, let me come down front here because I want to hear what you're saying. So, in case you're new to the church, a visitor, haven't been here for a while, we always have uh, congregational prayers, and we lift up prayer needs uh, for the church and for individuals. So, I want us to uh, pray. First of all, I want to mention Pam, who's here today. Pam lost her sister this last week. The funeral is coming Tuesday. Let's pray for Pam, her family, for Eric as he leads that, okay? I'm going to do mine a little bit different like I did a month ago. We're just going to collect them all up together, then I'll pray one prayer at the end. So just uh, what prayer needs do we have this morning? Just raise your hand. I'll come towards you, and we'll lift these up. Right over here, we've got one. Yes. For who? Nazi. Nazi? Okay. We're going to pray for Nazi and for her, her chemotherapy. Yes. All right. Don't be shy. Other prayer needs this morning. Yeah, yell it out. 
Yeah, for Buffalo, New York, they had a crisis this weekend. Another mass shooting. Horrible, heartbreaking. I think 10 people at least killed. Let's pray for the Ukraine situation. Every Sunday we'll pray for that. Absolutely. Other prayer needs in God's family this morning we can lift up. Yes, sister, I see that hand. I'm coming. (laughs) Dave? Steve? Steve. Diving accident. (laughs) We're going to pray for Steve. Other prayer needs this morning we can lift up. Tommy, I'm getting a good workout, brother. Miles? Well, who was the one just before Cooper? Uh, Cooper has diabetes. Okay. Okay. He just, he's like, he's eating his junk food and barely talking. Okay. Okay, we're going to pray for Miles and Cooper and also for Tommy this morning. I'll repeat them all so you can hear them. Anybody else this morning with a prayer need in God's family? Yeah, I was just going to mention that. Thank you. The Baxters have been sick at home. And I think they'll be with us next week, but let's pray for them. Anybody else this morning? First Baptist Church, Galesburg, we'd love to lift it up for you. Okay, if not, let's go to prayer and lift up all these needs right now. Father God, just lift up Pam and ask for the consolations of the Holy Spirit to be with her in her time in need and her family. Bless her, Lord, with your love. Wrap your love in arms of amazing grace tightly around her this morning. We pray for Nazi for the chemotherapy, Lord, for success, and Lord, for healing in her life. We pray, Lord, for consolations and love for the families who have gone through this tragedy in Buffalo. We pray for peace in the Ukraine. We pray for Steve for his health situation to improve, and Tommy for his arm to get better and stronger. For Miles, for his heart situation, Lord, to improve, for healing from the Holy Spirit to come. For Cooper's situation with health, Lord, and his issues, bless him, Lord, and give him your love. And for the Baxters to be back with us again soon to get over their illness. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Help us, Lord, to be a church filled with zeal, love, passion, and enthusiasm for you. And we pray, Lord, these things in your holy name. But we also, Lord, end this prayer time by saying together, the ideal and model of prayer that your son taught us to pray when he said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to sing our closing hymn right now. I'm going to ask you all to stand as we sing. If you'd like prayer this morning for more zeal and excitement, enthusiasm in your Christian life, just come down here. I'll pray for you this morning for that theme in your life. Bob. We are not singing the song that is on the the program uh, just because the team was working on it, wants to do it for you another time. So we are going to sing for the third week running, You Are the Mighty King. But we have sung it loud and fast. Today we'll sing it thoughtfully and prayerfully. You come down front. I'll pray for you. And I praise your name. And I praise your name, you are the mighty King, the living Word, Master of everything, you are the Lord. And I praise your name, and I praise your name. 
wonderful counselor you are the Lord and I praise your name and I praise your name and I love your name and I love your of peace, Emmanuel, everlasting Father, you are the Lord. Yes, I love your name, and I love your everything you are the Lord you are the Lord you are the Lord of peace, Emmanuel, everlasting Father, you are the Lord, you are the mighty King, the living Word, Master of everything. Bob, thank you so much. All right, well, we're going to close our service now with a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless you all. These are nice days in May. I'll be with you again next week, and then I'll be in Texas. Uh, my daughter, Jennifer, is retiring as a captain in the Army, and she's a chaplain, and there's big to-doings down there in San Antonio, so I'll tell you a little bit more about that next week. But keep me in prayer also as I go through these health challenges. Um, I'm really enjoying my time in Galesburg. It's been great being with you. It's great having Haley with us this morning. And keep praying for her. She's got a challenging summer ahead of her. That's not an easy assignment, passing all those tests. So bless her. Let's bow for prayer. Father God, I just thank you for this morning's service. I hope people have felt the power and the energies of the Holy Spirit pulsating through this sanctuary. I hope there's a fire over this congregation that lights us, Lord, and gets us moving in positive directions so that people in Galesburg will say, what in the world is going on down there at First Baptist Church? Let's go see and let's check it out. That church is filled with people who love others and are on flame for Christ. Help us, Lord, to be that church today, I ask in Jesus' loving name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.